I'm Jennifer Keynes from Mindful Waste, and we want to welcome you to our wormery. Um, this is an active worm farm. It's also a place where we compost, um, and there's two different ways of composting. And before we get started, just want to say that composting is basically human's way of speeding up a very natural process called decomposition. It happens every day without human beings. Um, when there is organic material, meaning anything that was once alive, when it dies, um, it goes through a process um, where millions and millions of microbes start the process of breaking that organic matter down. And then once the microbes are done, then the larger decomposers will come in, like worms and centipedes and millipedes, and they will break it down even further and eventually it turns into soil. So it is not rocket science. Um, everybody can do it and that's what we want to emphasize that it's really easy. You just have to play around with different materials and see what works and you will definitely see what doesn't work. Um, so today we, um, we're going to show you uh, our process of hot composting. In hot composting, um, you have to start with like a three cubic foot pile because that volume is what you're looking for to get your pile what we call cooking. Okay, it has to get to a certain temperature. Um, to make a good composting pile, you need four things. You need a source of carbon, um, which is what they call the browns, the brown materials, which are generally like dead leaves or wood chips or straw. So it also needs nitrogen, which um, is what they call the green materials. They're usually the wetter materials, such as food waste. That's huge, and everyone's got food waste um, available. And then grass clippings, um, that's really good to heat your pile up. And what we use here at the Wormery um, are actually the spent grains from a local brewery that's just right um, across the lake from us here. So we use what we have um, and the brewing process, um, you're left over with, it's kind of like making tea. We're just extracting the sugars from the grain, but the grain is left behind. So um, this is a great material. It has a lot of moisture and it has a lot of nitrogen. So we need to mix that with something that is carbon, um, a carbon source. And we, what we use is um, wood chips. And the reason why this is such a perfect balance is because you can see the wood chips are really dense and coarse. So that allows um, the pile to have some airflow. So we have our carbon source and you have a nitrogen source. And what else do we need to make a healthy compost pile? We need water and we need oxygen. So to make your pile at home, um, you're going to need a three cubic foot area and you're going to layer your compost pile kind of like a lasagna. So you want to make sure that somewhere in the pile you have a layer of um, some coarser material like sticks or twigs or even wood chips because that will allow the airflow. Um, you do also want to turn your compost. Um, with a shovel you got to turn it over so that air gets in there because again what you're doing essentially is you are keeping uh, microbes alive, okay? So think of a living creature, just like us. Uh, we would not survive without air or water. So same thing, we're just trying to make everybody happy. That's working the pile. So we wanna get that perfect mix of carbon, nitrogen, water, and air. We need this pile to heat up to 130 degrees for at least three days, because then that is going to kill any pathogens um, or any weed seeds. So it heats up pretty quickly. You can see this pile, um, we just turned it. So it's just starting to heat up. Um, but we have this thermometer. This is a compost thermometer, it's pretty big. So we're at about, ow, that is this hot. hot. Yeah, that's um, about 100 degrees. So it's still heating up. So a really cool, fun experiment that we've done um, for students is we try to see what we can cook in a compost pile. So um, what do you guys think? Do you think you could cook an egg in this compost pile? 
we actually did it. We hard, well, it's not hard boiling. We just hard cooked uh, an egg. It took three days. That was pretty cool. Um, so then of course we had to, uh, you know, follow the inquiry cycle and, and see what else we could put in there. So um, we tried brownies uh, and it just basically came out as like, I don't know, like lava cake. Uh, we didn't uh, heat it up long enough, I think, but we're gonna try that again. But um, yeah, we've actually met a farmer that cooked his Thanksgiving turkey inside his compost pile. Crazy. But uh, just so you know, you can tell how much heat this is giving off. So then we wait till that process, the hot process is over. It could take anywhere from a month to a month and a half. And then the pile starts cooling down. Um, and that's when the worms thrive. Uh, worms are just like us. They like um, temperatures about 70 degrees. So once this pile is cooled to be about 70, we um, will then use this material for our bedding and food for our worms. So welcome to the wormery. Um, this is our makeshift little worm farm. Uh, we use pretty much everything that we can get our hands on um, to make it functional. So you might see some odd things in here, but the whole reason why we're doing this is to fight food waste. Um, so 40% of all of our food that's grown in this country goes to waste, never reaches a human belly. Um, and sadly, it all goes to a landfill where it generates methane, and which is 28 times stronger than carbon dioxide, so it's actually heating the planet faster. Um, and only 3% of that is actually composted. So we are trying to teach as many people as we can how to divert land, um, food waste from a landfill and um, end up with the most beautiful natural organic fertilizer on the planet known as worm castings. So come on in and we'll give you a tour. All right, so we are gonna show you different types of worm bins and we want you guys to understand that you um, can make a worm bin out of pretty much anything. Um, you just want to make sure that there's some kind of airflow. You want to make sure um, that your worms are covered. Doesn't necessarily have to be with a lid. Um, we'll show you different covers. Um, and it has to be shallow um, worms. The, the composting worms are epigenic, which means they hang out in like the top six inch layer of soil which is where all the decaying matter is. So think of like when leaves drop um, or uh, log piles breaking down, that's where you're gonna find the composting worms. They're not like, they're um, night crawlers which are digging deeper into the soil. So always just remember kind of like what their natural habitat is. So shallow, um, the more surface area, the better. And, um, and then we'll get into um, talking about their bedding and their food. But this, we'll start off, this is like the Rolls Royce of our worm farm, worm bin. Um, these are made um, out in Sonoma, I believe, and uh, where they process um, cow manure and they basically are fertilizing all the vineyards out in Sonoma. Um, so this is what is called a continuous flow bin. Um, and it does look big, but the idea is that we just start it six inches at a time. So the worms, we started down here and there is a false bottom. I don't know if we're going to show you that, um, but it's actually, there's newspaper at the very bottom. And when this is full, we're going to crank it so that these newspapers are gonna break and what's left coming out is just pure worm castings. So we can show you up here um, what it looks like. So we, we start off with six inches of bedding. You can see right here, we make sure that the worms are at a good temperature. Um, so 60 be between 60 and 80 um, is pretty warm. So they're borderline not happy. Um, they're not going to die over here when it gets past 85, but they're just going to slow down. They're not going to eat as much and they're not going to reproduce. So um, we use these burlap sacks as a way to keep fruit flies out and uh, we um, dunk them in water and wring them out. And then 
Um, this moist keeps the worm bin very moist because the worms need moisture on their skin because that is how they receive their oxygen. They don't have lungs like we do, they breathe through the skin. So um, this again is that pre-composted um, wood chips and spent grain that we talked about. This is the worms bedding and then we actually feed them extra food scraps. Um, they could survive without these food scraps but we like to give them a pretty well-rounded diet and again the whole purpose of this is um to fight food waste so we bring our kitchen scraps sometimes the uh, scraps from the restaurant end up here um so you can see this is uh some blackberries that they're feasting on which they're probably yep there's a ton of them in here So that fancy um, continuous flow bin that um, we just looked at, we had an Eagle Scout actually replicate that, which is pretty cool. He made us two of those bins, um, and this is a great visual um, to see what we're talking about, the false bottom. So if you come in here and you see, um, this is what the bottom of the bin looks like. And then to start your worm bin, we would do six layers of newspaper coming up the sides like this, and then um, six inches of bedding, and then we'd bring the worms in, and once the worms are, and we would feed them, and then once the worms have processed that, we would just continuously, gradually add six inches of bedding at a time. And then we would harvest from the bottom when, um, when we fill it all the way to the top. So we can go over to the one that is full. It's almost full, so we're almost ready to harvest this one. Um, again, they love um, newspaper. They love cardboard is their favorite, like the corrugated cardboard. Um, some people say that they love the glue um, in the cardboard. So you can see that there's a lot of red wigglers in here. There is right here, that golden little lemon shaped thing is a worm cocoon. When worms mature and are able to reproduce, um, you can tell the adults from the juveniles because they have this band right here. Um, this is known as a clitellum, um, also called a saddle. This is, um, the clitellum, this is actually where the cocoon forms, and the worm will push the cocoon actually off its head. So not many people know that. That is how baby worms are formed um, and come off the body. You can see right here, this is a, uh, see that yellow one? And then right next to it, so when they're first come out, they're almost clear, and then they turn this beautiful yellow color. And then right here, you can barely see that, but that is a burgundy, like red. So that one we know is about to hatch. And it takes about 11 weeks, but it really is dependent on the conditions. So if the conditions aren't good, they will stay in there. They could stay in there for years. Um, they could be frozen. Um, and then when the, the ground thaws, they will come out. And there's either, there's, Anywhere between one and 20 baby worms will come out of that single cocoon, but the average is about six. So that is the life cycle of an earthworm. Wow. All right, so these are our other bins that, again, we're using everything that we have and we're trying to reuse things, recycle things. These are 55 gallon drums that we just sawed in half. They were filled with root beer for the restaurant. Um, so the worms really kind of like that. Um, so again, we're going for more surface area, shallow, um, so that the worms have plenty of air. And some people do drill holes. I would say in the beginning, you want some kind of drainage. Um, but really, when you get good at it, you shouldn't be operating, you shouldn't be relying on a spigot because any kind of bin that is draining is a poorly managed bin. And you won't get to that point until you've done it for quite some time. But I want your bin um, to be like a moisture level of like 70%. So basically like a really well wrung out sponge. So um, not too wet, definitely not too dry, because again, the worms need that moisture on their skin to breathe. 
Um, moving over here, we also wanted to show you that you can make a worm bin out of an old dresser. Wood is fantastic because it breathes really well. Um, we would just start this by filling it up with newspaper. Um, I can show you. We could take some newspaper, dip it in some water, and again, you want to wring it out. And then, well, this is actually cardboard, which they love. And you just tear it up into smaller pieces. Um, and then you want to add the most important part that a lot of people miss is you have to add some kind of compost or soil because again the whole worm bin starts with microbes if you just put worms in there you're just going to have pet worms and the whole decomposition um, is not really going to happen as quickly so but once you put in food waste um, there's microbes on there so then you're off to the races but we recommend um, definitely adding like a handful of compost or topsoil uh, to your worm bin. This is a really popular um, DIY worm bin. You'll see a lot on the internet. Um, just take a Rubbermaid bin. Um, you can actually stack them like one on top of the other like that. Um, encase it and drill holes at the bottom for drainage and we have extra holes up here for airflow because a lot of people, um, when you're just getting going, it's a good idea to put a regular lid on top of it to keep the worms um, safe and to keep it in a dark environment. And you know, when you're just getting going, you might have worm escapees. Um, so starting out, we recommend having that cover on. It could be loose, um, but definitely because it's plastic, it's not gonna breathe as well as wood. So the more airflow, the better. Um, you can also choose to buy one. Uh, these fancy ones on the internet are like $90, I think. Um, but these are really fun because it's a worm tower. So the way it's designed is the bottom layer. Um, you start with the bottom layer and you can see there's different layers. So what's on the bottom is pretty much all the worm castings. And the worms, see that? They will travel up you can't see it but there's little holes and you just keep feeding them when that bins full you start a new bin with fresh bedding and their favorite foods like avocado and they naturally will go north though and actually go up traveling up um, for food so this is just a really fun bin um, and it's easy to harvest and we're gonna talk about harvesting because that's uh, the most important topic because the whole reason why we're doing this is to harvest those beautiful worm castings um, and we want to separate the worm from the castings. So we know when it's time to harvest when um, you see all that organic material is broken down. For the most part it all looks the same. Inevitably you're going to find some things that the worms just didn't process all the way down like watermelon seeds. Um, Bigger twigs, if you added those to your uh, worm bin, they have a hard time with grapevines and then eggshells. These are really good for their digestion, but um, they're not gonna fully break down. Um, and then of course, an uh, peach pit. Um, so what we're gonna do to harvest the cast pure castings is we're gonna use one eighth inch screen. And this is actually for um, sifting for gold, but we are sifting for black gold today. Um, so we're just going to give it a go good whirl. You can already start to hear the castings falling through. Whatever's left on top um, can be put back in the bin to see if the worms will break it down further. Um, but you end up with beautiful, pure worm castings, which um, you can actually sell. And gardeners love it. It's the best plant food. Um, in nature. Okay, so when you're moving into the big leagues of the worm farming biz, um, you want to invest in a, a harvester that's going to help you move through it quicker. Um, so we um, have this beautiful machine uh, that we, when we plug it in, it actually vibrates up and down um, so that it's moving everything for us instead of us having to do it manually and it's less stress on the worms than some of the other 
um, automated sifters that we've seen, like tumblers where the worms are going around and around, kind of like on a roller coaster. So this um, is less stress on the worms. So what happens is we'll dump, like we just showed you, we will put our vermicompost right here and it's gonna shake. And this is one four, no, this is an eighth inch holes. So what falls through from here to here is pure casting. So right here, just like we showed you, this falls through there. So this bin is located under there. Then it shakes to here. It's going like do -do 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 -do. And this is actually um, a quarter inch holes. So this allows for the cocoons to fall through along with, this isn't pure castings, but um, it's still really, really good fertilizer. Um, but these are the worm cocoons. So this right here has a lot of your future generation worms in it. So these we could start another bin with. And then what comes out this shoot is um, what the worms didn't process. And then of course, all the worms come, come down with it too. And then we can put the worms and this future bedding into another bin to start the whole process again. So we hope you guys enjoyed the tour and we hope that we inspired you to start even just a worm bin in your house. You know, we showed you, you can use an old dresser drawer, an old plastic bin. You don't need a lot. Start with a thousand red wiggler worms um, and they can process about a half a pound of your food waste every day once they get established. And then their population is gonna double in just a couple months. So you will be surprised at how much food waste they will process and give you the best plant food out there.